welcome back to Archetypical, where we're excited to introduce our new AI Chatter series. It's an honor for me to collaborate with two incredible, incredibly knowledgeable experts in the realms of data science, AI, machine learning, Dr. Kenneth Samford and Dr. Marty Gout. Welcome on, guys, and uh, thanks for doing this with me. Um, both Marty and Ken are two leaders in our data science team, and I'm excited to start this series with them and show yet another form how unintelligent I am compared to the people that I get to work with. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do this series weekly uh, where we can delve into the latest developments from the dynamic world of AI, machine learning, and, and just data science overall. Um, so we're going to explore a few different uh, topics here. And, and why don't we, I did want to start off and give like a quick recognition to, to Fred on our team of our production value that we're adding to these now. So any listeners that are just listening to this, if you get a chance, definitely watch it live uh, or when we post it, I mean, uh, and, and be able to actually see kind of the production that we're putting putting forth to there as well. So why don't we dive into the first topic, Facebook or specifically Meta. So I know there was a, a lot of uh, a lot of articles that came out. And I also loved that it was uh, Mark Zuckerberg that, you know, when he's not practicing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, what he decides to do is post on Instagram some like major AI initiatives for his entire company. <laughs> the, the fact that it was on Instagram first off cracked me up. I get it. Like he owned like they own it. Like it's a way for him to put like make his product part of their announcements. But uh, there's obviously some some big chatter around the amount of money and effort that they're putting into generative AI and, and, and data science overall. I know he said back in October uh, and the quote was specifically, AI will be our biggest investment area in 2024, both in engineering and computer resources. And he's, he's definitely holding true to that uh, by indicating the purchase of 350,000 H100 graphic cards from NVIDIA. What, what do you guys think of that? Well, first off, it's uh, so he did it on Instagram, not threads and not on Facebook, which is... <laughs> That must be like the the sweet spot of the of the generations, right? If you did it on Facebook, it would just confuse confuse all the grandparents on Facebook. Um, <laughs> but um, I mean, the sheer number, um, you know, I think that some of the some of the later in the article it talks about perhaps like a, it's a quarter, like a quarter of of all global Nvidia production, or some 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 giant percentage of Nvidia production is dedicated to one company. Um, yeah, that's crazy. You know, if there were concerns about concentration in markets, I mean that that's like major major red flag for the for the, for the governing bodies that worry about those kinds of things. Um, you know, nearing single buyer of all the of all the output. Um, you know, that's one of the one of the first things that come to mind. Uh, you know, I, we should probably talk at least a little bit about why why GP. What, you know, why the why that mechanism is so important. Um, yeah, I was I was going to say, and uh, there's definitely listeners out there, and I, I'll, I'll I'll even say that I usually anytime I say this, it's actually specifically for me that like. I don't, I don't understand why, what is the reasoning that there's so much GPU needed for generative AI? Well, I mean, a GPU is just a really good, efficient math processor. Um, mm -hmm. Graphics, if you look at a screen, it's an XY coordinate, it's a matrix. And all of neural networks, which is the basis of language models, are big matrices. And so you have to do a lot of matrix math really fast. And GPUs are built for that because they were built for the gaming industry and the graphics industry. And now the data science industry has kind of co-opted them. And why do you need so many? I mean, that number 350,000 is, it's mind boggling to me. I, I can't answer why you need that many, um, but these models are very complex. Um, so I think I think some of them are getting close to trillions of parameters. They're definitely in the hundreds of billions. And as they keep evolving, you have more parameters. And each one of those parameters, you have to find the best value for. And you don't just do it once. You kind of it's kind of a guess and check. So you're doing a lot of back and forth math, and that's what these things are great for. The um, you know to, to kind of uh, 
put this into context of something uh, simple like um, like a, a linear like a linear regression, right? Like a a, for, a forecast of the of of future or uh, a prediction of uh, of you know how many units uh, a company might sell in a given period of time. Mm-hmm. There might be several important factors which would ind- which would lead to a uh, a model to make a prediction, right? Back in mm. the basics of statistics, we might say that the prediction, the why, or the thing we're after, you know, on the on one side of the equation is a function of a handful of things, like how many units did I sell last year? What's the weather? How many, um, what's the price of the item? Things like that. That's three or four parameters that you need to know in order to make a model. Uh, mm. These GPU models potentially have, you know, billions of of these things on one side of uh, of an equation, right? So, so instead of that math being like, oh, three or four or five or ten variables, it's it's billions, it's tr- it's trillions, um, eventually with with this with these numbers. So that's one thing. And then the other reason why you really need a GPU is that you know there's two parts of the problem. There's the, there's the build the model, right? And then there's the use the model. And so unlike other statistical problems where you, you really, like the GPU buys you faster model training and you don't need it necessarily for model scoring, in the generative AI world, you need it for both training and scoring. So okay. every time any of us hit chat GPT, right, we are actually hitting a GPU sitting somewhere in a, in a cloud environment, even in order to make a prediction, right? Which means, if you take this to his logical conclusion, that if we all are going to have our own G, all of, our, all of us are going to have our own GPT type thing, that means we all need our own GPU, like yeah. we'll need a GPU in our computer. We'll need a GPU in our phone. We'll need a GPU in the cloud, maybe. Um, so that's a good start. <laughs> but if you watch like Nvidia share price and what's going on, it's <laughs> you know we we're nowhere near the 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 top yet. No, that it was one indicator to see how the market reacted to like Zuckerberg's post when it came to Facebook's value nvidia's value uh i was i'm curious on is uh, they posted on the, one of the articles said that uh they're nvidia selling the h100 for around 25 to 30k and on ebay they're going for over 40 so even at the low valuation by the way that's putting meta at a nine billion dollar expense in this but i mean there's obviously a demand issue slightly there if we're seeing like it being sold off market for such higher value can we run out of gpu like is there like a different problem that we're not getting at of like gpu issue that's coming right down the pipe oh it's going to be a scarcity issue for sure i mean it's going to be like all the logistics problems we had with cars after during covid you know if the demand goes up and the supplier can't keep up or there's some sort of disruption, it's going to be a problem. I mean, yeah. uh, all the, all the, if Facebook is like a preferred customer of NVIDIA, which I mean, you buy a quarter of my stock, I think I'm going to make you a preferred customer. Guess what? All the rest of us get to wait in line while those orders get filled. Exactly. My question yeah, is seriously. why isn't, why isn't NVIDIA giving them a little bit of a, I don't know, volume discount or something. Well, I, all the articles <laughs> I saw were like, here's how much it costs. And even if they did pay the low end, I'm guessing we don't know how much they actually got. They must have gotten some sort of, <laughs> I would think, but who knows. Um, so the article then went into the fun topic of artificial general intelligence. So AGI, which I think is a very maybe controversial topic. I, I, what's your guys view? What is AGI exactly? What's your definition of it? Well, so what we're doing now is uh, like sometimes called specific artificial intelligence. It's geared towards a very specific task. Chat GPT completes your sentences. It does not do math. It can't logically 
deduce mathematical equations. Um, there's some iterations of it that's getting there, but it's a different use case. General artificial intelligence is just that. It can do induction, deduction. Um, I like to say it can create new things. Uh, right now, ChatGPT is not really creating new things. It's very broadly aggregating things it's seen already. It's combining it in unique ways, but it's not creating a whole new idea. Um, yeah. it, it, it's kind of like the movie industry. Everybody's retreading the same stories over and over again. Very rare do you see a whole new kind of story that comes out. And that's what AGI would be capable of, of making a whole, like imagine something as popular as Star Wars, but not a retread of the Star Wars theme. A whole yeah. new idea. Yeah. Is yeah, it for possible? Is it possible? Um, yeah. I mean, Ooh. it's getting, I mean, you see the GPT store, they all have, there's all these different generative AI, what do you call them, portals, right? And yeah. each of those portals is, you know, geared towards solving a more specific problem. Uh, you know, what, what, what this artificial general intelligence would be is that we just, this all just collapses into one, one portal and can handle and knows the difference and knows how to, you know, there's a tattoo store on there and then there's a generate a, a um, you know, like modify a pictured store. And then there's a, you know, search the, search the compendium of all articles, you know, that'll collapse into one giant model. Um, of course that, you know, that, that giant, that, that more giant or model <laughs> will have, will have, even greater horsepower needs, right? The computing horsepower needs. It, it, by, by sectioning them all off, it, it, make, it makes them more bite-sized chunks as far as compute power. The model doesn't have to be as giant, but like if you stick them all together, the model needs to be extra giant. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Gianter, Gianter as I like to say. <laughs> so what, and explain to me the aspect of is Facebook wanting to make this open source from what I understand or, and comparing that to like open AI, like, uh, well, how is, how is that working exactly? Well, I mean, if it's open source, that means you're sharing everything. There's nothing held back. Um, open AI is trying to not do that and monetize their stuff a little bit more. Um, I kind of think, in a certain way, open source may not be as open as we think it is because mm. you still need a GPU to run it or infer it or access to one on the cloud. So, you know, like Ken was saying, your phone doesn't have a, at least I don't think has a GPU in it yet. So the best you can do is access it via the cloud. Um, if you want to run it on your phone, it's not going to work. Uh, so is it really that open? And most of us unless you're into gaming, don't have GPUs on our personal computers at home. Uh, we just have a CPU, which is not going to be able to handle a language model. So again, you're stuck on the cloud. So there, it's open, but there's some barriers, technological barriers to participating in it. it. It's not all that different than, you know, if you looked at the, you know, the beginning of say the machine learning uh, um, proliferation when Python was taking over and then there's, you know, all the different license structures, you, you know, there were, there used to be a lot of uh, consternation around like what license you went under and, and were you truly open source? And you got to remember, like if you're uh, open source is kind of all, it, it requires the user to be so educated um, in order to actually use the openness of it that even if you gave me the source code, I'd still have to compile this thing the right and use it the right way. Mm -hmm. And this is even a more extreme version of it, right? Where uh, almost no companies right now are, are taking the existing open source models, which there are some, and, and doing anything materially useful with it. Most of them are using chat GPT out of the box with some technologies that make that 
uh, a little more customized, uh, what's called a rag, which has been in the in the news quite a bit lately. Um, so, you know, it's probably mostly PR that that anybody would care whether his model is open sourced or not. Uh, at least that's my that's my take on it. It's too hard to use. There's there's lots of instructions to do things in this world that are out there that anybody can grab and make, and nobody knows how to do it. <laughs> Right. Very true. I'm YouTube certified in a lot of things is what I tell people. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, so that's obviously on the, the, the Facebook front. We'll definitely leave the articles or the couple of the articles in the uh, description below. Uh, I want to wrap up kind of our time today with a, a question or a kind of a quiz a little bit for you guys, see what you guys, your guesses would be. Uh, I saw an article that uh, was specifically talking about data science, AI, machine learning, jobs postings and which state or actually which city had the most postings for openings in data science ai machine learning what's your guess which is a trick question like is it a a city that makes sense or is this a an outlier city that we wouldn't think (sighs) i'll here's what i'll say the article is specifically that uh shockingly it's not silicon valley but it is it's a popular city I'm going to go Austin. Uh, that's what I was going to say, too, because I'm a uh, Texas guy. Not, but not if, Austin. if I can't do not Austin, Austin, I'm going to say Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, South Carolina. Uh, no, nope, no, nope, still, still not. This one's more co- like it feels like uh, they're making a little bit of comeback. New York City. Really? Uh, wow. New yeah. York City was the one with the most data science, AI, machine learning job postings right now uh, in mm. beginning of 2024. So. And then closely behind it was San Francisco, but um, so definitely a, a fun fun fact for sure. Uh, well, I, again, I appreciate you guys coming on. We'll do this again next week, and we'll talk about what kind of happened uh, the following week and what's going on in, in the world of AI. So thanks for joining again. Very cool. Have a good one, appreciate everyone. it all, everyone. Tune in next week.